Psalms chapter 65 <clears throat> To the chief musician, a song and song of David. Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Sion, that's in Jerusalem, the mountain, and unto thee shall be uh, shall the vow be performed. Praise waited for thee is the only one you only thing you are to praise is God. You're not to praise anything else. God expects it, and we are expected to give it to God. The vow be performed. Those were the Old Testament sacrifices, or maybe words that you've spoken that you're going to do. You were expected to bring the sacrifices that were met for your life, whether it be a sin, burnt offering, free offering, whatever it was, whatever offering the, that the Old Testament state, you were to bring it. It was called a vow. And if you spoke with your mouth <coughs> to say you're going to do something or thought, remember about the thought, God will hold you guilty for your thoughts. You're to perform it. Solomon writes that, you know, it would be better if you just kept your mouth shut than open up your mouth and tell the angels it was an error. It's not going to go. You need to realize that God is a holy, righteous, just God. God does not take excuses. I'm sorry. God will give no preacher the ability or a pad of paper for excuse slips. It won't happen. O thou that hearest prayers, God hears the prayers. He may not answer right away, but he hears them. Unto thee, God, shall all flesh come. I've been in prayer for my back to heal, and God heard the prayers. He just chose to say, not now. Three ways God answers prayer. Yes, no, not now. Wait. All flesh shall come before him. Well, every man saved or lost will have his judgment. The judgment seat of Christ for the Christian and the great white throne judgment for all others. Now remember, the great white throne judgment is not just for the lost people. It says in Revelation chapter 20, if their name was found in the Lamb's book of life, then they weren't cast in the lake of fire. But all flesh, everyone that has been born, will appear before God one day. From one second old to, well, you find the oldest man, Muslusula, in the Bible. I don't know how many years he lived. They will all stand before God one day and give an account. Iniquity, iniquity, yeah, I can't say the word now. Iniquities prevail against me. We're all sinners. We're not holy. We're not just. We're not right. We're not perfect. We're not 100%. We're going to sin. As long as this flesh is still moving and the blood is flowing and the lungs are breathing, you're going to sin and don't say you're not. Then you're lying. As for our transgressions, thou, God, shall purge them away. Only God can wash away your sins. And that verse right there tells you, you can't do it. God has to do it. Not of works, least any man boasts, Paul writes. God is the one that purges the sins, not you. Not water. Not religion. Only God. Today is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Back then in the Old Testament was the law of the, of the sacrifice of the animals, the blood that was put upon the altar, but it wasn't complete until Christ died and was buried and rose from the grave. Still, it's God. Thou shalt purge them away. Thou, that's like what, what Abraham tells Isaac. And God shall provide himself a lamb. So, I don't know if David knew or if anybody's really discovered that that thou, that speaking of God, verse 1, shall purge them away. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's how we are purged. 
So it is Jesus Christ as God, and God is Jesus Christ in the Psalms, despite any religions out there that teach otherwise. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. You know, few are saved. And then there are ones that are saved that God chooses, like people like me. And it's not that God said, "Oh, I, you know, I'm going to choose him," and I'm not going. Listen, that's not the Calvinism theory. Is God will see those that are saved and those who are willing to give their heart and their lives. All right, that man I will choose. That's the election. I I chose to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And then after that, I gave God the election. Hey. I'll give you my life. I'll give you everything I have. I'm a sinner. I know it because I, I have iniquities. And God has purged me day after day after day. But here I am, Lord. Choose me. Use me. Jeremiah said, Lord, here I am. Isaiah. God said, who will go for me? And I said, I'll go. But you got to be purged for God to be choosing you. And you can't just be saying, I'm saved, and why doesn't God choose it? you got to be purged every day. And causes to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. Now, that's the Old Testament. That's the, that's the tabernacle. That's the temple that's going to be built in Solomon's time. The courts that are there. To be present at the, at the temple. Again, we're in an Old Testament book. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even thy holy temple. And there's what it's speaking about. As long as that temple was there in the Old Testament in Jerusalem, and do, they were doing what they were supposed to be doing, and doing it rightfully, and being purged as a nation, they had blessings. But look where they are today. They ain't got a temple. They don't have a king. They don't have a priest. They don't have the, the offerings. You know, if a Jew were to read the Old Testament today outside of Jesus Christ as a Messiah, every Jew is going to hell according to the Old Testament. You say, well, how can you say that? Are they going three times a year to Jerusalem? Why go to Jerusalem three times a year? Where is the altar? There is none. We're going through, as our family study right now, through the book of Leviticus. We just read issues, you know, if you have a sore, if you have a running issue, and this law and that law, you're to, you're to bring the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, you were supposed to be in Jerusalem. The airlines would love for the Jew to obey the Bible. Do you realize that? They would raise their rates around all the Jewish three times that they were to be in Jerusalem because all the Jews were to be there. They're not there. They don't go there during the Jewish holidays. They're not saved, according to the Old Testament, since they don't want to believe in Jesus Christ. Go talk to a rabbi about that. Say, Rabbi, how come all the Jews today are not saved? Because your law says you're to be in Jerusalem. Then look at the calendar, find the, the, the last Jewish holiday that passed. Say, did you and your congregation go to Jerusalem then? Why not? Rabbi, where, where, where's the brazen altar? Where's the most holy place? Where's the Ark of the Covenant? Then you're not saved. And you're not going to be until you believe the Lord Jesus Christ that God sent to be your Messiah. And if you don't want to believe the Old Te the New Testament, you are lost. Jesus Christ fulfilled that office 100%. And you had to be blind or envious, Pilate said, to reject him. You know, Jesus walked in, well, not Solomon's temple. The temple's not even built for David's time. You know that? What David's speaking about, it was the holy temple of Ezra and Nehemiah that Jesus walked in. It was redesigned and redone by Herod. And they say, well, hey, isn't this place pretty? Jesus says it's going to be all gone. 
and it is all gone. But it's coming back, the Antichrist is going to sit in it. Then it's going to come back, it's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ going to be there. By terrible things, that doesn't mean terrible, wicked, bad, ugly. That means amazing things. What great things God has done. Look all around you. An ant that can carry how much more than his own body weight. The fact is we haven't had any planets collide into each other. That water has not overflowed the entire earth like it did back in Noah's time. And God says, I'll never let that happen again, a worldwide deluge. But there are little floods here and there. Terrible things that God had done in Egypt. Terrible things that God has done to Judah for rejecting him. In righteousness will thou answer us. A sign. God, you're going to show us amazing, wonderful things like you did to our people in Egypt. O oh God of our salvation, who art the confidence of all the ends of the earth. Now, you can't say that today. Stop any, any man on the street and ask him who he puts his confidence in. I wonder what kind of answers you get. I don't even think a Christian would say God. And of them that are far off upon the sea. Now for them that would be the Mediterranean Sea up into Europe and Africa. Not just Jerusalem. But way there in the Asian countries and all that. And they would know about those nations from the caravan. That would come through. Listen, Jerusalem was a great carryover spot for everyone to go through. You know what it said in Solomon's time? It said Jerusalem had, had rocks, silver as rocks. There was one time when the, when the spies came back from the land, they were carrying two men, a, 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 a thing of grapes. Jerusalem was loaded with, with a land of milk and honey. Any caravan would have loved to stop through Jerusalem and get of its riches. It had iron. It had a surplus of, of commodities. Which by his strength, God's strength, set his fast the mountain. God put the mountain. You ever ask yourself what a mountain really is and why is it there? God. Being girded with power. God is the offer of the mountains. The strength of the mountains are from God. you never seen a mountain. I ever know once yet that the hair of a mountain just crumble into nothing. I know there's volcanoes, but I'm just, we're not, I didn't say volcanoes. It said a mountain. You know in the tribulation, mountains are going to fall? You know the Bible speaks that Jesus is going to come down and the Mount of Olives is going to split into two? There's going to be massive earthquakes that are just going to level this planet? That Jerusalem or Zion will be set as the highest elevation of all the world? Which stilleth the noise of the sea? Matthew 8, 26. Jesus got up, rebuked the wind and the seas, and they perfect calm. The noise of their waves and the tumult of the people. Listen, those disciples were afraid. The storm was coming into the boat, sinking the boat. They that dwell in the uttermost parts of Parts are afraid at thy tokens. God has a testimony or had a testimony. You don't mess with that God over, you know, a lot of people. You know, with all that, they still didn't believe the gods. They 
They kept their gods and didn't go for their god. How wretched. Pharaoh never gave in and died as a lost man. Thou makest the outgoings of the morning and the evening to rejoice. God giveth us the mornings and evenings. And this will be a rejoicing time. Time to be afresh and get up and, and do something and a time to lay down, rest, and sleep. That's rejoicing. Thou visit the earth. How? And water is it. You mean weather? You know what the, you know the, you know the, the, the world in America is saying about this verse? El Nemo. Global warming. The, the something vortex, whatever it is. They're taking a the name from God in the weather and giving it to other names. God says, I visit the earth. How does God visit the earth? When he waters it, when it rains or it snows. That is God. Thou greatly enriches it with the river of God. Now, in the millennium, you're going to have that pure river that's going to come out, which is full of water. Thou prepares them corn. Again, this this will probably go right over to the millennium. Or the nation of Israel when they done right and they were prosperous. There were a couple times in Israel's history that the priests had to tell the people, don't pray anymore, we got too much. Stop. We got to make some more buildings here to, to keep it all. When thou, God, has so provided for it. You know, we don't give God the, the glory for everything that he gives us, the rain. There are people right now out in Western America, they're praying to God, the God they don't believe in, the God they don't serve, for rain. The Salvation Army was one of the ones that they posted there. And the Salvation Army has... has has gone to themselves, adapting to world policies and world things to get worldly money that even the Salvation Army had called the cops and prevented us from getting the gospel to kids. And then you think God's going to hear you cry out? When you violate his word and say that when he says an abomination for sodomites, When this country wastes food as much as it does, you know, we could take all the food that is thrown out in one day in an American restaurant and we could feed all of India and those poor nations. How we take little fruit and we make little decorations of it for our dinners and stuff like that and we don't eat it. And you get things, you get these, these, these uh, town, city fair, you know, let, let's have a, a pumpkin cannon and a watermelon cannon. And that all, you're wasting God's food. And the government will tell a farmer, come in and plow under your crops. We'll pay you. Or the army and the, and the military will, will gather up on ships, all this, these potatoes and stuff like that, and you just sit there and rot. And then the government turns around, we're, we're here to help you out. We don't give God the blessing and we don't give God all the credit. Thou waters the ridges thereof abundantly. Farming land. Thou settles the furrows thereof. Farming land. Thou hearkens it, thou makest it soft with showers. The proper amount of rain. Not too much so it washes away the, crop, the, the crops or the dirt or the seed. You know what America has for farmland today? It has concrete and, and, and blacktop parking lots in stores. 
The farmer has to go in debt to do his job in America. We've got a chemical farming today where scientists come up with their chemicals to replace. And then you wonder why there's so much cancer. God blesses the springing thereof. It's a proper growing situation for farms and all that. And this will be the case in the millennium. Where the Bible speaks about one's going to plant the seed in the ground and someone's going to be right behind them there to pick it. Right there. 100% growth, 100% product of the seed. Listen, only Isaac did that in the land of Gerar. Said he sold and, and reaped or, or harvested 100% of what he did. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. Goodness throughout the whole year. Listen, we're on, we're in February seventh, the second month, the seventh day of this month. We've already had troubles and problems already. But then again, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's a Jewish passage we're reading there. That, that can't be applied to the Christian. And fatness. When they did right and do what they're supposed to, or in the millennium, they're going to have a fatness. They're going to have everything they need provided for them. There'll be no starvation unless, the Bible says, if the nation that don't come up to, uh, to the Lord in Jerusalem, they're not going to get no rain. If you obey God in the millennium and do what you're supposed to, and... You're going to have fatness. You're going to have the proper amount of rain. You're going to have what you need to produce. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness. That's places where man, had, man didn't plant. That's not a farm where a man planted and has a house and all that. You know, you're going along. You got your caravan. And here's a spot here. Wow, look at, look at all these. Fruit trees. Stop here and get a bite to eat. A refreshing of water. And the little hills rejoice on every side. Little hills that be be green and, and productive and pleasant. The pastures are clothed with flocks. That means there'll be sheep all around the land. And the valleys also are covered over with corn. Well, look at the valley. Valley is supposed to be that, you know, that, that distressed time in our life. And here in the valleys is corn, wheat, food, bread. And what in our life today is miserable and hardship and troubles and problems in the millennium, it'll be food. So you want to kick Jesus at Christ out? You'll lose your food and you'll get a val you'll get an empty valley. We're coming to a time not for the Christians because we'll be out of here. We're coming to a time in this world that the only way you're going to get food is you do what the devil tells you to do. If you don't, you won't get food. You'll be in a valley. Not when Jesus Christ comes. They shout for joy, for food, for all the sheep, for the blessings of being fat. I don't mean fat as in, you know, overweight. I mean full. They also sing. You ever hear the songs of America, what they sing to? It's not to God. It doesn't give God the glory. You ever hear the songs that are being sung in the churches today? You ever know how many hymns in your hymnal are wrong and are sung? Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. 
I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come.